What's going on Founder Fam? Nathan Chan here, CEO and publisher of Founder Magazine. Welcome back to another Founders Hustle episode. We show you behind the scenes of how the hell we're building this company. Now, if you are enjoying this series and our YouTube channel, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you also leave a comment below. What more behind the scenes would you like to see? And also smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. So today I'm gonna to be interviewed by Jay Phantom, fellow Australian. He runs a podcast called Storybox. And basically like, I don't usually do interviews, but he was super persistent. And I wanted to help him out. He's gonna ask me all sorts of questions, I assume, about the journey, how the hell we built this company. And uh, yeah, let's go. Hello everyone, I'm delighted to welcome Nathan Chan to the Storybox podcast today with a passion for entrepreneurship and people. Thanks so much for having me, Jay. It's an absolute pleasure. I have one question that I genuinely love asking people to start things off, which is what does success look like to you? Just doing work that you enjoy and being able to have the freedom to, to do the work you enjoy and uh, just live a good life. Where did you come up with your version of success? Was there like a... a a catalyst moment for you or has this been like a gradual thing over time? I think it's been a gradual thing over time. Like for me, I didn't think that I would get into entrepreneurship or start a business or anything like that. Um, I just kind of fell into it. I fell into it because uh, really about I wanted to find work that I was passionate about. When you're early, you know, your early days of high school, you're kind of pushed towards, you know, choosing what you want to do for the rest of your life. And it's just absolutely ridiculous because you're at an age where you don't really know who you are and you're still trying to get to know yourself. You mentioned there your strengths. Um, I'm curious, what were they and are they still your strengths today or have you ad adopted new strengths into your life? Yeah, when I say my strengths, I would say my strengths in academia. So, um, you know, uh, the subjects that I did well at were IT and uh, business management. Both of those, they have nothing to do with real world skills around business or IT. And how old were you when you decided to go study marketing and, and go do all that? About, yeah, I was around 23, 24. Yeah, I went back and did a master's in marketing part-time uh, while I was working at Intrepid Travel doing IT support. I started to look for a job in marketing and um, yeah, couldn't get a job in marketing. No one gave me a job. Like I was really hungry. Went for three different roles at Intrepid. I went for some external roles as well. And uh, yeah, just, just no one would give me a crack. I started um, looking into online marketing and meshing my passion for technology with marketing. And um, I stumbled across, uh, at the time, it was this thing called the 30 day challenge, which taught you how to make your first dollar online. And it teaches you everything you need to know about online marketing. It was a free 30 day challenge, but, and I thought that was a fantastic idea. And I thought, oh, like I can really flex my skills here because I can like create this magazine and yeah, basically uh, scrap that idea. And then I was looking into, you know, entrepreneurship and I thought that was a really interesting space. So during that time when I was working on the magazine and even launching it, I remember even taking the magazine, which was founder, um, to job interviews. I'm not like most people where they're like, oh, I want to start a business and like they dream up this idea and then they're working on this business. Like I had no idea what I was doing. I was the most naive, per naive person you could ever imagine. Do you think that naivety was a good thing though? Yeah, 110% because I didn't overthink things, which I think um, oftentimes people were like, get in their own head and they want it to be perfect and all these different things. I just, I just went with it, man. Like I was just so frustrated um, with the work that I was doing. I just, I just needed a change. Oh, absolutely, man. Like I'm curious to know why weren't you excited to go to work because you had studied for such a long time. You'd done all this hard work to get a job in the first place, but yet you weren't happy. So why do you think that was? Cause it wasn't fun. Like I just, it just didn't fulfill me. And it's like one of those hard things to describe, but you just, when you know, you know, right? Like some people, 
they struggle finding their passion or purpose or they say, you know, like how, how do I find out, you know, what my purpose is or how do I find out, you know, and I've got friends, probably you do too, that like they might be not loving what they do and and they're stuck. I'm, I'm curious, Nathan, for, for you and not getting the job, when was the moment that you realized, hang on a minute, I can make founder a full-time thing and I can start earning money? When was that moment? After the first couple of months. So... The first day I launched the magazine, we made $5.50 and had two subscribers. And then at the end of the month, we made $80. And then I was like, oh, wow, like coming into the next month, I was like, geez, I've got to launch the next magazine edition. I've actually got subscribers and like, I don't want to let people down. Someone's paying you for something and you don't deliver and you're selling a monthly magazine subscription. Like, there's no way I would ever let that person down. The realization that it could be a full-time job was this beautiful thing called recurring revenue, which, uh, you know, it, it, it's a subscription and it just kept going up, right? The second month, it went from $80 to like $200 a month. And then the third month, it went from $200 to like $350 a month. And I'm just like, wow, well, look, if I keep applying myself, I can keep building this thing. Um, now, I did have some roadblocks along the way uh, in the first four months. Um, we got an interview with Richard Branson uh, for a front cover story, but at the same time, we were sued for trademark infringement. The magazine wasn't called Founder at the time. It was called something else. Um, and I uh, ended up changing the name of the magazine to Founder. So that was an interesting uh, like stumbling block, but recovered, kept moving. Yeah, after that, then like, yeah, for me, it was just a matter of time. Like, and I, and I started hanging out with people, like I was really hardcore networking and I was going to local entrepreneurial events in Melbourne or meetups. What would you say has been the hardest thing about running Founder, like the day-to-day -day rituals and, and routines that you've implemented? What would you say is, has been the hardest thing? If you were to break it all down and you were to look at the one thing that sort of gives you the most pressure, the most anxiety, most stress, and that becomes the hardest thing, what would that be? The responsibility that I have um, for everyone that works at the company, right? Like we've got a lot of expenses, man. Like we're, we're making moves, right? Like we haven't raised any venture capital, but we sacrifice majority of profit for growth. And yeah, we're making moves, right? So we hire a lot of people, we're doing a lot of stuff, right? Like we've got over 40 people, it'd be close to 50 by the end of this year. A uh, lot, of, lot of expenses, a lot of costs. Office here in Melbourne that could fit 70, 60, 70 people, office in New York. So that's pretty scary. Like that, that's probably one of the hardest things, making sure that your um, business continues to grow, you know, like you, you're keeping your team happy, you're meeting their expectations. It's a good answer, man. What would you say is the key to leadership, key to leading a team that size? Uh, having a good coach. Um, so, and learning how to be a good CEO, like a proper coaching environment where you're catching up with someone on a regular basis. They're constantly challenging you and pushing you and giving you feedback and they're helping you problem solve quite frequently. Um, not just like a, a random call with a person on clarity, like, like legit, like coaching or advisory. I like that, man. It's so true, isn't it? Um, I, I'm curious to know who has made the biggest impact in your life, whether it's spiritually, mentally, physically, tricky one because I've been very lucky to, to be surrounded by really incredible people throughout my journey um, before Founder 2, not over, not even during Founder. Uh, probably, look, probably my mum, right? Like if we're getting like real, like um, I have a lot of respect for my mum. She's taught me everything I know a lot um, and she's taught me some really good principles around how to approach life, right? Like that's probably what, who's had the biggest impact. Like professionally, um, I would say uh, one of uh, my advisors, Steve McLeod. But what, what advice would you give to a young person that 
wants to start their own business, wants to make moves, make their own moves in this space, which is a heavily saturated uh, market for entrepreneurs. Like it's almost like this celebrity uh, status now to be called an entrepreneur. Um, there's a lot of people that like the idea of starting a business because like you said, it's like the new cool, right? If you're, you got a startup, you run a business, like you got an online business, you're like, cool, right? It's like a status thing now. Um, and, every, and you know, Instagram and the Lambos and all this rubbish, right? Like that's not like what entrepreneurship is, but it is, it, it can be perceived that way through a different lens, right? So I think the first thing is if, you, if you're a young entrepreneur or you, you're, you're a young aspiring entrepreneur, I think what's key is just getting very, very clear on the kind of like business you wanna build because I think so often people have these crazy ideas and these outlandish ideas and it's cool and exciting, but you really need to look at the model first, not the idea. Um, and the reason I say that, and it, you know, it's not something that people often think about is because depending on the model that you choose depends on how much money it's gonna to cost to create it. A lot of young aspiring entrepreneurs start with the idea first and it's not necessarily that smart because then they commit to this idea and they're like, oh, I've want, I wanna build this app, right? And it's gonna cost tens of thousands of dollars in development and then they don't do anything and then they use it as an excuse and then they say, I don't have enough capital or I don't think I have a good enough idea and all these ideas. So I think think about the model first. That hunger, that, that just wanting it bad enough, you have, to form, you have to experience some form of adversity. That doesn't mean something terrible happens in your life but you have to take a couple of hits, I reckon, in some way, shape or form where you have to just have had enough. And that's where my hunger comes from. Dude, this is my last question. This is uh, my legacy question that I love asking people at the end. So your friends have been, your friends have put together a highlight reel of everything you've ever said and everything you've ever done. And you've been able to reach the age of 100, right? So they've shown it to you on your 100th birthday. Don't ask me how in the world they got it all. We'll just call it magic. But they've shown it to you on your 100th birthday. What do you want that highlight reel of your life to say and to show about it? Basically that he's uh, had a good life. It's been good, like crazy. Yeah, yeah, good fulfilled life. The founder mission is to help you create an ass-kicking business and help you learn straight from the mouths of world-class founders. Get your free printed edition of Founder Magazine featuring Sir Richard Branson. Just cover shipping and handling at founder.com forward slash Branson.